Well, today on Nation, a Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking all about how to be found. Everybody wants new customers, everybody wants to advertise, but how are you found? So, if you are a window cleaner or heck, just have some time to hang out, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? <clears throat> If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. It's better than a cat video. Uh, almost seven years. Next month starts our seventh year of doing this. So, I'm getting old. Anyway, thanks for hanging out regardless. But today we're talking about how to be found. And what's interesting about this is so many people create ads and put stuff out there and and they talk about it being busy or not busy and nobody is focused as much on how to be found like how that all works like you can see the surface and you can kind of make assumptions from that but you don't really dive into it and i know some of you do but i know a lot of us don't really dive into it so i figured i would talk a little bit about that today and a big piece to being found that people kind of forget is you dictate it. You are the one that creates either you being seen or not being seen. And a lot of you go, yeah, well, you know, so-and-so, that bigger company, they're going to have, you know, much more advertising and all that stuff. And to the point kind of is true, but you can throw a lot of money at the wall and it doesn't always stick. You have to kind of focus on how to be found. How are people finding you? What are they searching? What are they looking for? How? Right? Some of us kind of tend not to really focus on that and more or less just look at the surface info. But a big piece is that we have to get into that mindset of our prospect. When we talk about an avatar, an avatar is just basically a uh, generalization of our most common customer. Right, so yeah, it's a, um, a woman. She is uh, 47 to 58 years old, has two dogs, has three bedrooms, kids in college or um, close to that age, right? You could come up with a whole thing, real avatars. It's been years since I've had mine, but it's like a page long of stuff. I mean, husband likes to golf. Right. I mean, you know, potentially owns a boat, you know, like weird things that you kind of find just seem to be this reoccurring thing. And that is your prospect. And you're going, well, why does it matter if the husband wants to golf? Well, you're trying to talk to them. Your prospect. If you said, you know, something in your ad about, um, yeah, let us do the window cleaning so you can polish all this, you know, precious gems you ever could want. You wouldn't be talking to very many people unless they do precious gems or whatever. That was a really bad, it's early. I tried to pull something out of my butt there, but you know what I'm saying? If you're trying to throw something out there, but it doesn't connect, it doesn't connect, right? We would love to do the window cleaning so that you have more time to spend with your pet elephant. Well, most people don't own a pet elephant. It doesn't make sense. But if you said your dog deserves a hike, let's do the window cleaning. Free up your weekend to go take your dog for a walk. And you have like a picture of the happiest dog ever, one of those smiling dogs. That one ad could have such a bigger impact then you having a picture of somebody cleaning a window and you're going, clean windows, pressure washing, when gutter cleaning, and you know, like the typical ad. We're talking, we're making connections. We have to connect. I'm gonna talk about the trigger, but that is it. You have to trigger a response. So here's an interesting thing. To, to, to put it into perspective for you listening, Say you're in the market for a new window cleaning truck, a new truck, new van on the road, right? For the most part, we want a white vehicle. It could be simple, have a little bells and whistles, but simple. 
right? If you're throwing another vehicle on, you're going to get it wrapped anyway. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need, you know, a Bose surround sound system and, you know, air ride suspension. You don't need all that stuff for a business or work truck. So if you saw an ad that popped in there and the ad was just, you know, the easiest way to buy a great work truck. You know, one signature is all it takes. We'll get it wrapped for you. Whatever. Now they're speaking to you. And that all of a sudden sounds great. But to my wife or somebody who's not in a business or whatever, they don't want a white wrapped work vehicle. They don't care. But they're talking to you. See, so when you put ads out there, remember they're talking to a specific person. It's down to the fact that you look at McDonald's commercials are talking to one person particular person this is this is odd but step back and think about this every mcdonald's ad you've seen probably with the exception of maybe one percent for the past 30 years well, let me rephrase that 20 years it used to be the ads were all you know a busy mom in like a working suit and you're getting kids food, they're getting Happy Meals and they're happy, right? That was who they were targeting. Now it's changed. Look at all of the commercials are early 20-somethings. That's who goes to McDonald's. That's their customer. They know that. They advertise that. They don't go out there and go, hey, are you looking to take your wife on a very important 30th wedding anniversary date? Come to McDonald's. We're the that's not what people do. They don't bring that up. They don't talk about that. That's not what they're doing. You have to find your prospect, the mind of your prospect, not your mind. You're not your customer. We have problems with that sometimes because we try to like, well, I really like this thing I created. Oh, this is going to be great. And then you do it and you're, nobody responds. You're like, why not? I thought it was great. Cool. Why do you care what you think? You're not at all, at all who you're talking to. You have to get in the mind of your prospect. Finding out who the prospect is really does help. It's tedious and long, but everything is based from there. From the color scheme to the pictures to the where you advertise. I'll tell you, this is off topic from this one, but think about this. When you know your mind of your prospect and who that is, now I know, okay, I could advertise on Facebook. Most of the people in that generation are in Facebook. I said a lot of them are moms. Maybe they're in mom groups. Maybe they're in neighborhood groups. Maybe they're whatever. But they're on Facebook where they're not necessarily on, say, LinkedIn or something else where a lot of people are like, well, I like that. Well, of course, but you're not going to advertise there. That's not really what, it, what, what you're not speaking to the person. Get in the mind of the prospect to figure everything else out. Another piece, now you know who you're talking to. When you create your ad, you cannot tell them all the information they ever need to know. That is not what an ad does, ever, ever. No one reads an entire ad. No one. I know you go, well, yeah, but they, you know, that's why I put window cleaning, pressure washing, roof cleaning, screen repair, track cleaning, inside, outside, we do. I put all that stuff down there. And then, you know, if they find, you know, in the very end, it's, you know, bird, you know, poop removal or something, then they'll call me. No, they won't. No one's getting down there. No one's going to look at all that stuff and then go, oh, this guy also does this. What is your bread and butter? Your need to know, say, window cleaning. Yes, we do pressure washing too. But our main thing we're advertising for is window cleaning. We want that, but we want all the, we want everything. But I have to focus. Okay, cool. Your ad should be window cleaning. Now that they're interested, they're going to go to your website. They're going to call. They're going to do something else. Now you tell them about everything else. The pressure washing, the roof cleaning, the all that stuff. Do not overdo your ads. It's a need to know thing. You tell them what they need to know when it's the time they need to know it. If they have to get triggered in, same thing with car wraps, with ads, with things. If I glance at something, if I go, if I look at something like this, and you just saw it for two seconds, you probably didn't pick anything out. Yeah, the pictures are something to look at, but when you have writing, you have to be able to pick out big letters what it is because it stops you. There's a junk, junk, window cleaning, Ooh, window cleaning. If they're intrigued, it triggers that. This is why when you're doing EDDM, 
that three times to the same person three different weeks works is because they get that in their head. It reminds them they may miss the first one. Window cleaning, I don't need that. Second time, window cleaning, yeah, I thought about that. Third time, window cleaning, man, I have been thinking about window cleaning. That's a, because it's in their head now. Need to know. Yes, we do a bunch of services. Yes, we want you to do all of them. I would love for somebody to do every service we offer every single time. But you can't sell on everything. Again, back to big advertising. Coca-Cola, the company. When they do an ad, it's of a can of Coca-Cola. Or it's a can of Fanta or whatever. They own 130 different brands. But every time they do an ad, it's for just one thing. Dasani water. Right? McDonald's, when you look at their billboards, it is a high-res picture of a burger because they sell more burgers than chicken sandwiches. They always put their most popular thing on the ad. And the reason is because that contacts, it connects with enough people and there's other people who look at the burger and they could still think chicken. But they're like, oh, burger, I'm not really into burger, but mm, they do have chicken. They think that, but the burger's what gets them. And you see that they don't have billboards with every item on their menu. They just don't. And it's because if there's too many things, you lose it. The more things you have, the less people can see it. You have to stop our goldfish brains. And the reason to do that is the need to know when you need to know it. You can't tell them everything. It has to be simple. It has to be precise. It has to get them intrigued. They're going to go to your website. They're going to call you. They have to book the appointment somehow anyway, or ask questions or do whatever. That's when they learn everything else. Too many times people lose that aspect where they're trying to like, I'm going to get found. I'm going to put everything out there and then I should be able to, every single person who looks at my ad will want to call me. That's not how work how it works. It's not how the brain works. It's not how advertising works. It's not how triggers work. We all do say 10 things. If you really break it down to like, really, you know, we do outside window cleaning, inside and outside window cleaning. We do maybe house washing. We do concrete, roof cleaning, screen repair. We clean tracks. We clean screens. You could come up with, say, 10 things. But if every time you put 10 items there, no one thinks you're good at any of them. Jack of all trades is the master of none. You put one item, then explain the rest of it. You will have a better response by putting one thing on there, window cleaning, than you will by putting five things, or three things, or 10 things. When people think, well, if I put one thing, it's only window cleaning people that call. But if I put three different things, then three different people will call. No, they won't, because they're not looking. They're nobody looking at an ad. Ooh, look at this ad. I'm gonna read the entire ad. That's why text font uh, and size is so important, is because you can force people to read what you want them to read when you want them to read it. Biggest is first, smaller is second, smallest is third, the small little fine print's the last thing. In an ad that does have fine print, it's there. You've looked at it. What does it say? I'm guessing 99.9% .9 of you and that other 0.1% of you have issues. But don't read that. Because your brain just is uh, just not, inform not important information. That's what advertising is. When you put too many items on there, it just becomes noise. They just don't stop and look at it. You have to create intrigue for somebody to actually look at it. That's why the back of a book has a synopsis or just an overall kind of um, um, cliff note summarization of the book. It's easier to read some other things. That's once you get the intrigue. But the ad for the book just says, you know, thriller. Murder at the beach. Get people to read. Now you read the back. You know more. Now you want to read the book. You keep creating the interest. If you put too much stuff, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Remember, it's what they need to know when they need to know it. It's truth. By the way, I'm going to give you my shameless plug of the day. If you haven't yet, my name is Jersey from windowcleaner.com and I am a rep for windowcleaner.com and I want to be your rep. It's what I do, literally how I make cheddar. So if I can help you at all, placing orders, any and all orders, just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, my order's ready. Put it through. Amazing. Amazing. 
thank you to all of you that do that, by the way. Phenomenal. I'm literally, every time I text people back, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. And I feel like a broken record, but it's so true. It's the reason I get to live and, you know, buy my hair gel and, you know, buy bottled water. It's because of you. So thank you uh, very much for doing that. My number is 862-312-2026. If you're in the field right now, save my number. Uh, if you're too busy and you're working on the tools, just search my name, Jersey with windowcleaner.com or window clean resource you'll find it everywhere i'm on the wcr page just, i put it out there a lot save it please let me put all your orders and i definitely appreciate it if you haven't yet also yes the american window cleaner magazine awcmag.com is phenomenal Ugh. i know i talk about this every time but this layout in this new style is just so sexy it's so good to read it just like flows so awesomely. It is uh, a huge, huge resource if you're a window cleaner. American Window Cleaner Magazine, go to awcmag.com. Get a subscription because you want to be amazing. And it also comes with the uh, sticker sheet. So, sticker sheet for window cleaners. Go get it, awcmag.com. Thanks. Anyway, back at everything. Um, you know, we got in the mind of our prospect. We told them what they need to know to get them intrigued. But now I also need to keep an eye on what everybody else is doing. And sometimes, again, look at your, when you're driving your car, your windshield is this big, right? How big is your rear view mirror? It's only this big. You should never not look at the competition, but it should never be your focus. With ads, you just wanna see what other people are doing. Not that you're copying them, it's just that you can see what they're doing to be different. See what, you're, see what they're doing so that if your ad next to their ad stands out, right? You're not doing what they're doing. You're trying to just be something else because again, break the noise. Break the noise. That's what ads do. People think that advertising is telling everybody everything they need to know. No, that's why we have websites. That's why people can call you and do their research. An ad is not at all that at all. Look at any ad in a in a in a anything, magazine, in a TV show, on TV, on the radio. Billboards. The most successful billboard is something that is absolutely simple. Again, McDonald's. It's a big Golden arches with a burger and a yellow background. Stands out from the trees. Stands out from the buildings. Tells you everything you need to know right there. You see these big billboards and there's all this stuff and it's all this and this and this and this and this and this. And here's our name and number and here's all this. Stuff. No one's reading those. No one's reading ads like that. The best ad you can have, say it's in a magazine or a newspaper, when these guys take out these full page ads and there's one line in the middle. They go, why would they do that? They could put so much more. Because you read it. You read their entire ad. There's not ever a time else that you've read an entire page ad unless you were really intrigued in what it was talking about. And how do they get you intrigued? Right? So by looking at other people's ads, you can kind of see where they're going in their direction and you can kind of tailor something to be different because we're breaking the noise. If five of your other competitors have the same kind of looking ad and they got that... You know that thing everybody uses? It's like a, a deep blue with the water droplets. And then like, you know, a squeegee coming through, close up of... If everybody's using that, don't use that. It is the most overused image ever. Even if you created something that looks like that, it's going to look like that to everybody else. You didn't break the noise. You just duplicated. And then there's just confusion. Again... If you all are doing the same thing, then that thing doesn't matter. They're looking for the difference between you. So see their ad and see what they're doing and just kind of know that you're going to do something different. I had a company, this is years ago, that every time we would put ads out, uh, we did um, a bunch of different ads, but for this particular one, um, it, it felt like every time we put an ad out, that we thought was different within two months, they had an ad out that looked almost the same. Like 
same color, same everything. And I know they were trying to create confusion maybe or copy and say, well, this has got to be working. It's got, all it did was just make our ad not good. I mean, it just was, there's two ads that look the same. Like I can't break the noise when everything looks the same. If I write down an entire page of words, I tell you a story, but there's no breaks, no paragraphs, no bold text, no nothing. How do you pick something out? You can't by looking at the page, nothing stands out to you. It's all the same. You have to see what the other people are doing to just know where you're tweaking things to be different. If everybody's got an ad out there and everybody's ad is blue, you're yellow, you're red. Find the buying trigger and run that route. The only way to do that is to see what everybody else is doing, not copy. Go the opposite way than copying. Opposite of copying is something that I can't think of the word, but you probably are smarter than me and you know that. So once you have everybody else's ad, you know who you're talking to and you're telling them in your ad what to do. Now you have to understand what a buying trigger is. I talked about that a second ago, but one of the things, so I get, I get asked this a lot. I have, you know, hundreds of you I talk to, uh, daily, you know, um, I would say close to a thousand different window cleaners a week and a busy week. I told you stats last time, but I'm talking to 150 different people in text alone. I'm getting 16 to 20 hours on the phone. I have, you know, 26 hours of live chat. I talk to a lot of window cleaners. And one of the big things that I hear from people is that they say, hey, I did this ad, it didn't really do really well. Why do you think that is? A, I can't answer that question because I don't know enough information. Hey, I got something in my right hand and my left hand, which one do you think is more? I, I, I don't know. But I can tell you what more than likely is happening is A, your ad's not speaking to who you're supposed to be speaking to, which means it's not heard. But more importantly is there is no buying trigger. The buying trigger in any sale is the point of that, that they have enough information, enough intrigue, and enough desire that they want to buy. This is why when you see ads, it says, for a limited time only. Or for the next 10 callers, sense of urgency is a buying trigger for now. This is why you don't see coupons. They're like, hey, call now and you get $20 off. This coupon is good for the rest of the year. Well, I go, oh, well, I'll call later. Right? If there's a sense of purchase or need, right? If that triggers somebody to go, man, I need to get this now. They will. But if there isn't any sense or trigger or anything that makes them want to get this now, they're not going to. They go, I'll remember this. They won't because how many times have we done that? Oh, that company's called KCS. Yeah, okay, I'll remember that. If I don't write it down, I'll remember it. You have to have a buying trigger. And ads that fail don't have the correct trigger to the correct person. When you see stuff out there and it's like, you know, we only have a couple slots left. People are like, I gotta call now, I gotta get this done, it's a buying trigger. Sense of urgency. Pain points are a buying trigger. If I have a pain point, something I don't like to do, something that is uncomfortable for me, I'm not gonna do it or whatever, I want something to take that away, right? This is when you watch infomercials and there's a guy you know, trying to wash his car and he's throwing stuff around like, washing your car, just getting too difficult and the guy's like, hmm. It's creating a pain point. Oh yeah, I hate washing my car. Well, get this one thing and it'll spray and then everybody's, it's in color and everybody's happy. They're spraying their car. Oh, look how easy it is. I don't have any pain. I'm happy. 
buying trigger. Same thing with infomercials. You get all the way to the end and then, eh, that's pretty good. I kind of like that, but you know. Well, if you order right now, we'll double your order. Well, let's do it. I was almost there. They got, it was pushed over the edge. It was the buying trigger. The reason you see so many of these things in all these ads, these buying triggers, these things you're like, well, everybody does that. It's all said that. It's because that is what works. Buying is mental. Humanity has a thing. No matter, even if you are crunchy and you think you're completely off the th it's not the same. Because then being crunchy is the reason you buy something. It's the buying trigger still. Right? I, I go against the norm. I only wear, you know, hemp clothes. Okay. Well, then the ad you saw for that hemp brand or the things that people talked about was probably, hey, this is 100% certified hemp. No pesticides used. No, all of those things create your interest to buy the thing. Even though you think you're not buying it because of that, you are. There's almost no time ever you've bought something without the trigger happening. Think about a new car. Yeah, we don't like new cars. That's expensive. What happens? Man, I really like that. All of a sudden you're doing stuff, other things, you're sitting down, you're on the computer, like, man, pop that back up. You're like, man, I really, every time I see that, I really like that. Buying trigger, I really like that, passion. Now in a car ad, when you see luxury cars, it's through the winding mountains, right? Or it's on the night of the town, or a uh, uh, night on the town. And you know, everybody around is dressed all fancy and uh, all the women look at the car as it drives by or your friends are all laughing because you're driving and you can't believe you have this and you're driving with your fancy watch. And uh, The buying trigger is there. A car being fast is a buying trigger. A car being economical is a buying trigger. A car being... Nobody sells a Prius to somebody who's looking for performance. Right? Nobody does that. They're selling a Prius to the people who want to buy a Prius. Somebody wants big gas mileage to save the environment, maybe. Right? Who takes things slower and enjoys helping the planet and gets gratification from that. That's the buying trigger. And then at the end, they tell you about the discounts and everything else to get you going. You got this all your so you're into it. Oh, here's why you should buy right now. If you start to look at it, every ad is laid out that way. And how, they, how do they know what works? We talk about split testing. I'm not gonna get into that split test everything if you're not, you're literally throwing money away. If you think for one second that you are so amazing that you can create one ad out of your rear end, put it out there and it's amazing and it does everything it could ever possibly do and be the best ad that you will ever have, you're completely uh, naive to how business works. You will always have a better ad. Even ads that are split tested by somebody else and done, you still can change text and fonts and different triggers. And there's so many things. So split, split test, I'm not talking about that. But track what you're getting. So many people, I mean, so many people do not track hardcore. I mean, how many times has somebody been like, ah, oh, we just did a Facebook ad, you know, whatever. How many people did you get? Ah, oh, man, we had to probably gotten like five or 10 jobs out of that. Five or 10 jobs, so you don't know if it's 50% of what you say or 100%, which means it could be anything in there. How much money did you make on the ad? Man, I gotta think like, you know, $5,000, I bet. Do you? You bet? You don't know. Got it. Uh, how much money did you spend on the ad? Well, we spent on like the ad since, you know, we got a bunch of campaigns, but I try to spend like 250 a day on, so what is that on, what ads? Like not tracking, you know nothing. You know nothing. A stopwatch goes down, not to the second, but to like the microsecond, the smaller milliseconds. They want to be detailed. The more info you know for real, detailed, the more you can do with that info. If I know that ad, I'm running four ads, I've run four ads, this ad's gotten me four people, each of those at $373 on average. I've made that much on those. This other one 
got me five people. They were averaging about $112. Well, I got five people on one, three on the other. I'm going to be like, oh, this one's doing way better. But is it? You don't know. You don't know. You have to track everything. If you are doing all of this work and you're not tracking,